What's up, guys? I'm Matt Reyes here. And I'm Zach Getmore. And we are at one of Zach's jobs in New Jersey. Zach, modern bath, beautiful work here. Thanks so much. How about we give him a couple tips today? Let's do it. Four tips for a modern bath with Zach Detmore. Let's get going. All right, Zach, beautiful work here. A lot of cool details on this modern bath. I want to start with this one though. When I saw this bathroom, I was absolutely blown away by how you're heating and cooling through this strip right here. What is that? That's not actually heating and cooling. Really? So by code, you need a vent in a bathroom, right? Okay. So this house has a structural cedar roof. We could mm -hmm. not put it in the roof. Yep. We could have put a wall mounted vent there, but it really wouldn't fit the modern aesthetic. <laughs> so what we've done there is we've used a router to channel out a slot in a piece of MDO plywood. Oh, that's plywood, not drywall. Exactly, we mounted that up there and then we've run ductwork along that down this wall and into an inline vent, which is blowing out the side of the house. Oh my gosh. So not only awesome. does it look a little bit sleek, but it's actually right where it needs to be to capture steam that's coming from the shower head. Yeah, it's right in the right spot. Plus that thin black line just looks really nice on a modern house like this. It looks as, as good as possible with having a functional item. Yeah. And the nice place about that location is we are absolutely able to make a double-sided one. Ah. So this being a water closet, you have a smaller vent on this side. On this back side right here. Yeah, that's and pretty you just cool. switch it on right here. I like to try and put the switches as close to the shower as possible because a lot of times you get in the shower, you turn it on and then you forget, oh, I forgot to turn it on. So you don't want to have it on this side of the bathroom when you're running a big uh, wet line across to get right. to it. So I try and put them as close as possible um, and have a dedicated switch for that. It's quiet too. Room tone. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. All you're really hearing is the air moving through that slot. So the next thing I'm noticing, beautiful tile layout. Any tips on this tile layout in particular that uh, you could pass on to us? So what's the first thing you notice here? It looks pretty even. And if you start at this corner, you have a full tile, mm -hmm. full tile at the top. In the corner, you have two full tiles. In the corner where the niche is, the niche is exactly two tiles deep. So you yeah. have full, full, full at the end, come out here, full. And that's not by accident. No cuts anywhere. Yeah, the way you do that is you order your tile before framing, okay, and then you can lay them out with the proper grout spacing, make a story pole. So we did that, held the pole up, and then framed this wall using that. And we actually made a build show video about ah. that so other people know how to do it. How about that? If you don't know, Zach is shooting videos over on thebuildshow.com, buildshownetwork.com, same website, on a weekly basis. Go check out that one. I'll put a link in the description. And every week, Zach has a new video. So this is some really good stuff. Tip number three, we're actually going into the water closet, right? Yeah, let's take a peek in here. So you've got a wall hung toilet, a great modern detail. Right, and the nice thing about that is ease of clean, losing the tank, but what happens when you have a wall mounted toilet? Typically you would see tile behind it, yep. but the clients did not want to tile this. They felt like it would make it a little bit too busy, but any toilet application, you're going to have some washing that's happening around it, which if you use uh, drywall or other products with anything that can get wet and get damaged is going to be a problem. So this is again MDO plywood ah. and uh, makes all the cuts easy. You can Smart. do it with a jigsaw and it also and once it's painted it looks like drywall. Exactly. Smooth but it's drywall. Much more durable and the price point's not bad. These are this is only about forty dollars a sheet for half inch. That's not bad. And the compressive strength is much stronger because if you if you've seen a couple of these toilets, if they're mounted to drywall, eventually it's going to compress mm -hmm. and then the toilet doesn't feel as strong. Right now this is really robust. And what we like to do too is stash a little secret cabinet <laughs> behind a picture frame. Check that out. That is awesome. And then you just inset a cabinet up here. A lot of people you'll see will do a ledge but the ledge just sort of tells people that, hey, there's a wall-mounted toilet right. and this is all the space you've lost. But when you have a cabinet there, it just looks like a solid wall and you're none the wiser. That's really smart. And I like to do the cabinet too, because remember you have a exterior wall. Mm -hmm. So you really want a lot of insulation and air yeah. behind that tank of water in this climate. Smart. So we have a very deep cavity here with a lot of insulation and air can move through that. Um, and we've actually have piped a little bit of warm air to the back of that just to make sure even 
during the coldest temperatures. I noticed there's some stickers in the back of that cabinet. What are the stickers telling you there, Zach? So two things. This one at the top is telling you the heated floor specifications because this floor is heated. Okay. So it's got the amperage and also telling you not to drill through the floor, <laughs> right. right? And then this other one says remove this box to reach LED drivers and tub temperature controls. Remove the box. So you can just slide this no out. No way. Check that out. That is awesome. And in here, Dang. pretty much every job has mechanicals you need to reach, but they're in the vanity. They're hard to access. Yep. You want to think about the tradespeople who are coming after you. So the electrician can easily swap out any of these four drivers or a plumber can access this tub control, service the tub, turn these valves off without having to be in a vanity and work super smart work at what we like to call a gentleman's height that's yeah, what a carpenter yeah. told me so make it easy for them and then this just slides right back now in what there. no hold on before you put that back talk to me about that you got like five standoffs back there what's going on with those so my carpenter kalen he did a great job this is basically just a spacer block to stop that unit from sliding in further ah. and then he's got a magnet on it just to make a positive so connection. he put screws in there so he could adjust it and that cabinet now fits perfectly flush in that piece of MDO, and that's just telling him where to stop it. So it was a smart way of, of getting the depth you need. Also, you can see he's got his closed cell foam back there too. So in this cold New Jersey climate, everything's nice and insulated and air sealed. Super smart, man. What a great detail. And also one last thing before you slide that back, I also just realized you've got a, looks like a piece of maple sliding uh, that it slides on top of to, uh, to maintain the height. And this looks like it's a maple. Did you guys make this maple cabinet? No, this is actually a maple drawer box. Ah. So there's a lot of uh, local suppliers or websites where you buy a drawer box. And if you make it yourself, then you have to go through the extra effort of doing a, you know, a nice high performance finish on yeah, the interior. Yeah, you gotta finish it. Whereas so what, a drawer box comes pre-finished. Yeah, and typically what's a drawer box? Maybe $130. You're not gonna pay a carpenter to necessarily go through all that work for $100. Yeah. So just getting a drawer box, if you have the time and forethought, it's easy just to do it and, that way. And just a little magnetic touch latch on the top of that and you're good to go. Yeah, and we actually put the touch latch on the top so that you know if the kids come in, they push this, nothing's gonna happen. You really have to be tall enough to reach the top. <laughs> if I pop There's it back in. There's even thought about where to put the touch latch. I'll show you I if like I put it, it back in here. That's so awesome. And then it's just slide on that bottom rail. That's really cool. So I push up here, it's latched. The only Push problem is here, when they get happens. tired of that painting, they gotta call you to put a new painting up. Ah, that's job security. <laughs> that's job security. <laughs> Zach, really nicely done, man. Four really good tips for Armada Bath. If you guys don't know Zach Detmore, at Detmore101 on Instagram, correct? Right. Uh, and Build Show Network shooting videos on a weekly basis. So I'll put a link to both of those below. Anything else that we missed? I don't think so. We got, last thing we did miss, we have a trades series. Zach is a lead carpenter runs a small uh, carpentry firm that does this type of remodel work here in New Jersey. We're doing a series called Talking Trades, which is coming out in the not too distant future, talking about why high school kids might want to get into the trades, including Zach's job, which is a lead carpenter. So stay tuned for that. Zach, really appreciate your friendship. Awesome videos. Go follow Zach. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Do you know how I close up my videos? Follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Yeah. <laughs>